So far, we have learned how to gather user input from a form using event listeners and event handler functions and how to manage their state using different approaches. Now, let's implement the functionality where we want to submit the form when the user clicks on this add product button. So what we want is when the user enters details related to a product and when he clicks on this add product button, we want to gather these states and we want to combine it into an object. Let's see how we can do that. For that, either we can add a click event listener on this button element, but this would not be the best way of listening form submission here. There is a default behavior built into HTML forms. So if a button, especially with this type submit, if it is clicked inside a form, this overall form element will be submitted. So this form element in that case will emit a submit event and we can listen to that submit event on this form element itself. So on this form element, let's add on submit event listener and to this let's assign a function. Let's call it maybe create product event handler. And let's go ahead and let's create this function. So here, let's create this function. And to create a function, we also need to use this function keyword. Now, when a button of type submit is clicked, the default behavior is that it will reload the whole page. So if I go to the web page, you will notice that when I click on this add product button, it is reloading the whole page. That's because when a button is clicked, the browser automatically sends a request to the server whenever a form is submitted. So in our case, when this add product button is clicked, it will submit the form and browser will send a request to the server. Here, the server is our local development server and this will make this page reload. And that's not what we want here. Here, we want to handle the form submission with JavaScript and we manually want to collect and combine the data into a product object. So the first thing which we need to do here is we need to prevent this default behavior of reloading the page. And we can do that by using prevent default function. So again, this event handler function is going to receive an event object. Okay. And on that event object, we can call prevent default. Now let's go ahead and let's create an object here and let's call this object maybe product. And inside this object, we want to have these properties. So what I will do is I will copy one of these objects here. I will paste it here. And let's replace these values using these states. So let me copy this p name and I want to assign the value stored in this p name variable to this p name property of this object. In the same way, I want to assign this p price variable to this price property of this object. Then let me copy this P description and here let's assign the value stored in this P description to this description property. All right. In the same way, we also have this P available variable here. So we want to assign the value stored in this P available variable to this is available property. And finally, let's also copy this p image url and let's assign it here to this image property now all these values here are string so this product name is going to string this description is going to be string but this is available it is going to be of type boolean so let's convert this string value into its boolean type by typecasting it to boolean using this boolean function. Again, this boolean function is JavaScript specific. It is not React specific. 
In the same way, we want to convert this price into n number. For that, here we can use this number function, which will convert this string value into its numeric type. Finally, let's go ahead and for now, let's log this product object in the console and let's see how it looks. So I'll copy this product object here and I'll pass it to this console.log statement. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. All right, let's clear everything here. Let's enter a product name, maybe test product price, let's say 100. Product description, maybe test description available in stock. Yes. And let's choose a product image here. Okay. Let's click on this add product button and you will notice that here an object has been logged. If I expand this, it has this PID, which is one. So basically for each of these products, we also have this PID property, but we are not gathering the value for this PID property. This PID property should be assigned automatically based on the number of products which we have in the product list. But for now, let's simply keep it as one. Then for other properties, you can see that it is assigned with those values which we have entered in these input fields. So you can see price is 100, uh, product name is test, product description is test description, then this image path is this path and is available is true. So in this way, we have created a new product object using this form. And if you notice when we have clicked on this add product button, it has logged that product here and we still see these values in the input fields. So what we want is when this add product button is clicked, it should create a product object and it should also reset this form. It should clear this form these form elements should again become empty. Let's see how we can do that in our next lecture.